Valve, I blame you directly for my messed up sleeping schedule. It's 5 a.m., dude. Why are you dropping that right now? Yeah, we've got a new operation, Operation Riptide, which explains the shark emoji bait on Twitter. The old nerf and M4 being buffed and the new shorter matchmaking, there's a couple of changes alongside the usual sticker capsule and we're gonna go through them together. Oh yeah, and now we have a Rambo agent. I've always said if you want a specific skin, the dumbest thing to do would be to try and unbox it. The odds of you unboxing a knife are actually about 0.30% and even then, you could unbox a 40 euro knife like it happened to me twice. Pain. So I bought my first knife, a Karambit Vanilla, and has been sitting in my inventory since then. And today, with the market going wild, I could sell it for triple the price. That's where Skin Baron comes in. I can sell it there and then cash out the money directly to my bank account. Everything is transparent and the fees are well explained. You can also buy skins for cheaper than the Steam market, about 30% less in average. And with a 24-7 online support, if you happen to have a problem, they will be there to help. Warning though, make sure that you use the right links, because a lot of websites are trying to impersonate them and you can use my affiliate link that is down below in case you have a doubt. So Valve released the 11th operation for CSGO, Operation Riptide. When launching the game, you will be met with a cool video, which looks fun, of course, but I will have to warn you, the volume is gonna be very loud. We'll go into the operation itself in just a bit, but first, let's talk about the changes made to the gameplay, because that's what matters, guys. The Deagle has been nerfed, or... so it seems. Like, finally, I have dedicated two videos on the subject. It's about time. The Deagle is supposed to do less damage, or so it has been said. I tested it offline and I don't really see a significant difference. I can still hit two shots in the stomach, or chest and stomach, depending on the range. So, uh, it doesn't seem like a significant thing. Um, I don't know what you think. The M4 A1S has been buffed. They said the body damage is increased. And uh, I tested offline again and it kind of did the same thing, so I don't really see much of a difference. I guess there's a possibility it's only buffed versus non-Kevlars. Well, we'll have to see the stats before saying more about that, I guess. Grenades are now droppable. Yeah, you heard it right. They were teasing and memeing about it on Twitter, but it's actually now gonna be a thing. You will be able to drop your utility on the ground, going for different tactics, I guess. So from now on, if you're going to ask for a flash, you could end up by having someone actually dropping you a flash. It opens a few possibilities during the round and in theory the limit of flashes you can buy per round is not gonna change. So a team is still going to be able to buy 10 flashes per round except that now instead of stacking them on your pocket you can drop them on spawn and eventually come back later to make a bait or something. I don't know I kept saying CSGO need something fresh and maybe we have it there. That's something to see. The vision after death timer has been reduced by a bit, so that once you are dead, you can't give too much info on where the enemy is going. That is a good thing, and I never understood why it was even so long in the first place. Dual Berettas are cheaper, you can buy them for $300 if you ever want to go for the cowboy playstyle, and this too has been... kind of slaughtered. By that, I mean, instead of flipping the doors, Valve lowered the ceiling in front of the spawn so you can no longer see and shoot at pigeons when they cross. Kinda like 1.6, but you can still jump down and shoot them, only that is gonna be a bit harder. I guess the timing might be a bit off as well, since you will first need to jump before being able to see someone crossing, and for you to have a shot on the guy crossing, you will have to have the best spawn, and even then, I'm not sure the timing will hit right, so that alone is a big change for those two. And now, you sickos, the reason you're here, the Operation. Operation Riptide follows the logic of the previous operations at a whopping 12.65 euros, roughly $15. We're going for a battle pass kind of vibe, an expensive one, once again, but I guess you could somehow make some of it back by completing the missions and cashing out the skins or agents that you will unlock with the stars. Speaking of which, same as usual, 40 euros for 100 stars, your boy Jeff tried his luck, and of course, I got nothing to show. Except now, I am gonna be naked matchmaking flexing my muscles on kids. And when I will ask for a drop with those big guns, they will comply, I'm sure about that. Like every operations, we are blessed with a new set of agents and, um, well, as always, I can't wait to see what kind of balance issues those are gonna bring, but at least, again, I can play naked in CSGO, that's a win. There is an interesting mechanic, but only for the train collection, that is, instead of putting X stars and having a chance to get a rare skin, most likely gonna get a blue, you can now pick the color of the skin you're going to try your luck for. If I click here for 100 stars, 40 euros, I will have one of those two skins. Notice they are both red, so you can pay more, but you will have a red guaranteed. Hmm, 
but they look like us, so why would I do that? As per usual, a couple of new stickers, graffitis, and we have a new set of collections, that is the 2021 collection of Mirage, Vertigo and Dust 2, which makes me wonder, does that mean the previous collection will be discontinued? And also, something I noticed is that I cannot sell my Riptide case. The option isn't there. So that's gonna be interesting, like the CSGO network has been down and very unstable as I'm recording this, so maybe it's just a bug. But if it's true, then it means you won't be able to stock up on cases to sell them in hope of gains, but you will first have to unbox the cases and then store the items. It's definitely a different system, and I guess we'll have to wait to hear from Hazus to get those deep analytics on the market. Of course, with the Battle Pass comes a few missions, like shooting bots or doing stuff on different modes. You know my position on that. It is not worth covering. Something new that is worth covering, however, is a new option to queue for a short, competitive matchmaking. It was an ongoing debate to rework the time of a CSGO match and we now have something to try. When booting the game, you can choose the match length and select the short option. Instead of first team reaching 16 points, it's gonna be the first one reaching 9, so it's almost half of the classic matchmaking. And yes, your rank will be affected. You can up rank or down rank by playing the short matchmaking option. This is a change I was looking for. It is true that I sometimes feel like CSGO matches last too long and I'm actually looking forward to play this. It obviously Obviously raises the question of how did they balance the economy, if they even did in the first place, but it's 5am and I will test that tomorrow. Next up we have a very simplified private queue that's going to be very convenient for you if you want to host viewer games for example. By clicking on this button you will generate a code, send it to whoever wants to join and then your match is going to be hosted on a Valve server with the premiere settings, with the veto and all of that. That kinda should have been there like 10 years ago. But it's a good addition after all, and I guess why not? There's a few fixes on Inferno, a new map for Danger Zone, and something that looks fun that is the return of shields in CSGO. Uh, don't get your hopes up though, it's only for casual hostage mode, but it's probably gonna be fun to mess around with this anyway. Now I'm pretty sad they removed Mocha and Grind from matchmaking. Said no one ever. A few changes on Ancient and the deathmatch mode has been reworked a bit. We even have a team deathmatch mode where the winning team will be the one who reaches a hundred kill first. Once again, a cool addition and I guess why not. Those are pretty much the big changes coming with this operation, the highlight of this one being the short matchmaking option. I guess now we're gonna have to try it and see if it's actually any good, and if they did the same poor job they did with the retake mode then it's a waste. Overall, I'm kind of disappointed by the gameplay changes, the Deagle and M4 don't appear to be significant enough, and I like skins as much as the next guy, but in the end, there's not that many changes to the gameplay, which is what I care about in the end. Also worth noting that there's not gonna be a separate queue coming with this operation, like it happened with Broken Fang, and it makes me kinda sad once more. Matchmaking needs a rework, it's a fact, and I hope that Broken Fang would be the first step. I was hoping for a 5v5 team queue or something that's a bit more exciting, but it's not for now it seems. Anyway, I think we covered it all, there's no point in extending that video more than that, and I want to sleep. We started a CSGO TikTok by the way, CSGO.funnies, go follow there for daily CSGO clips and don't expect to see me doing dance moves there, you're gonna be disappointed. Thank you for watching, poster check, and I will see you in the next video.